everyone and welcome to the Oaklords YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to make an adorable clear bag. You guys know how much I love clear vinyl. I love working with it by machine, not so much, but I love clear vinyl. Today, we're going to make the two-in-one clear bag and this comes to us from Sewn Ideas. So if you haven't noticed, we've done a lot of Sewn Ideas patterns. I love Sewn Ideas. They come up with the best, cutest little items. They're very well written for beginners. This pattern is also very well written for beginners with lots of adaptation opportunities, which we are going to take advantage of because although I love clear vinyl so, so much, my machine does not, and we have a lot of disagreements about that, so I'm gonna walk you through that today. You can see it has a very simple shape to it. It has a flap, a front, a back, a beautiful base that is so fancy. Like I said, you can adapt a lot of this and I'm going to do that. So for example, the first adaptation is I'm using a printed vinyl, which means it has a directional print. So instead of one piece, I'm gonna be using two pieces and then piecing them together to create that directional print. We also have this beautiful flap here. The pattern does suggest you use a twist lock, turn lock. That is going to be the easiest way to do the flap. However, I have these really decorative magnetic snaps. I know, isn't that so cute? And I've been wanting to use them for a while. So we're gonna use one of those today in the tutorial, just like I did here, just so I can kind of show you how to do that, how to use a magnetic snap with something like this. But it does require quite a few more steps than if you were to use the turn lock, so just be aware of that. Another adaptation, but I'm not showing you in the tutorial, is I'm using a pre-made strap that I've already made. This is what I call a fancy strap. Um, I'll have another link for a quick video to show you how I made that. One of the things I love about this pattern, but my machine unfortunately does not, is that it uses oh, French seams. We love French seams! For those of you guys who have seen the grocery tote tutorial that we've done on the channel, French seams are wonderful, we love them. However, we're doing a French seam with clear vinyl, which is beautiful because it keeps it nice and soft and pretty and supple. However, those layers in my machine did not get along at all. And so I debated a lot over, should we try to power through it? And I show you kind of like how I fight my machine and do a couple stitches, tie it off, do a couple stitches, tie it off, or should we just change it in today's tutorial? And so I think if we're, today, I think we're gonna, we're gonna do another option. So the pattern tells you how to do the French seam. It's very, very simple. But I think for today, I'm actually gonna do some binding to bind those side seams, just to make it a little bit easier on my machine, just to see. And you can see on the top of the clear bag, you have this beautiful bounding here. You could use your vinyl, which is what the pattern suggests, is to kind of bring it all together. I, of course, wanted to make this as wild as possible, so I use this beautiful stripe nylon adhesive binding, which is one of my favorite things to use. So I'm gonna walk you through the pattern, and I'm gonna walk you through what I like to do. The pattern also has quilted vinyl, so if you're using a clear vinyl, that's gonna be beautiful with that. Two things, I'm kind of lazy, so that's why I didn't quilt this. However, I wish I would've, because that would've looked beautiful. And uh, I don't like confrontation with my machine, which is why, again, we're gonna try to do a couple little twists and turns here to uh, make it so I don't have to fight with my machine so much. However, I do highly encourage you to try the pattern as is because, again, with those beautiful French seams, it looks super professional, super nice on the inside. Um, and it really just depends on what vinyl you're using and the machine you're using. So for you, it might be no challenge at all. So I do encourage you to do that first. However, if if you're like, you know what, I wanna try something different, I'm gonna show you just, just the, I mean, just, a, it's super simple, it's just binding the seams instead of the beautiful French seams. So thank you so much as always to Sewn Ideas for allowing me to use your patterns on my channel. I get so excited when I see a new Sewn Ideas pattern because again, they're written so well. One thing I specifically like about their patterns is that from everyone I've seen, whenever they walk you through the photos of each step, they use a different colored solid material for every single piece of the pattern. So it's really easy for you to identify what's what. You know, sometimes it's kind of like, Am I looking at the lining or am I looking at the exterior? You will always know what pattern piece is what because every single one of them is a different solid color, which is just a little thing that has a big impact, especially for beginner sewers. If you're new to the Oaklords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. If you have any questions, comments, other sewn ideas patterns you wanna see, I've done most of them. I think I've done most of them. I always go back to a sewn ideas pattern. So if there's another one you wanna see, leave a comment down below. I will link the playlist for Sewn Ideas as well over here, so if you wanna see some of the other ones. Again, like I said, they are perfect for beginners, perfect for beginners. And while this one is clear vinyl, I know a lot of people get nervous about clear vinyl, most of them you can be used with quilt cotton and are very, very easy to put together. All right guys, let's get started. All right, to make this bag, you're gonna need about 3 8 of a yard of faux leather. Now this is gonna be for some accents and honestly, I'm probably gonna use even less than that because I'm gonna use something else for like that top strip around the top of the bag. Um, but if you wanna use that, I would suggest you use a lightweight 
faux leather or vinyl, nothing too heavy or too sticky. We have enough stickiness with our clear vinyl and we do have to layer this up quite a bit. So the heavier and thicker the vinyl, the more difficult it's gonna be to work with. So something nice and more lightweight. Then you're gonna need at least half a yard of clear vinyl. Now I'm using a printed clear vinyl, which means I'm actually gonna probably use maybe even a little bit more than that because I'm going to cut two pieces instead of one and then I'm going to piece them together to create one piece. I'm gonna show you how I do that. But I have this really fun printed vinyl here. Um, whatever kind of clear vinyl you have, there should be some sort of backing on it. Now maybe it's like a paper backing. This is more of like a, like a mesh backing. Hold on to that because we're gonna be sewing over this. This stuff is great because you can just rip it out of the stitches and it's gonna make it so that it doesn't stick to everything. So make sure you don't throw away this, this backing material. And then you need like the smallest cut of quilt cotton. This is actually like a 10 and a half inch by 10 and a half inch cut of fabric. It's um, in something called a layer cake. You can get a whole bunch of prints for a smaller price and it's really fun. So just a small cut of quilt cotton for this. All right, and I'm just showing you scraps of material here because I've already cut it up, but you're gonna need a very small piece of woven interfacing, same size as the quilt cotton. So like 10 inches by 10 inches of a woven interfacing. It's only gonna be for the quilt cotton piece, so super small amount. And then an even smaller amount of some sort of firmer interfacing, like Peltex, this is Decable Heavy. I mean, I, you could probably even use a piece of foam. Anything like that, Just it's just for the base of the bag. And honestly, if you're using vinyl that's a little bit thicker, maybe you don't even need it. Um, if you're using purse feet though, I would suggest you have some sort of a firmer interfacing or stabilizer to go with that. Okay, so here's the hardware and other things I'll be using today. First, I have a strap that I've already made. Now, I, this is a strap, this is a quilt cotton, one and a half inch to one inch hardware fancy strap. Um, I'll have a video that I can link down below for this. Uh, this is this is just a strap thing that we do <laughs> in Shop Oakland. So if you're interested in this, I'll have the video down below as well as the information on how to make that. But that strap is already done, so I won't be making a strap today. I'm also gonna be using this binding right here. So this is a one inch wide, like nylon binding just a long cut of material and it has a sticky backing on it. And I'm gonna show you how I use that because I'm gonna be changing up things just a little bit today to make it easier for me to make this bag. Um, like I said in the intro, my machine does not like layers of clear vinyl, but I love this bag. So I'm gonna use this to help out with that. And then I also have two three quarter inch D rings. And then I have four Chicago screws here. So a rivet, you know, use a rivet press and you press it in. A Chicago screw just has a screw on the back. Either will work. I'm using these though because the material I'm using today has bats on it and these are bats and I think that'll be really cool. And then instead of a turn lock, I'm gonna use a magnetic snap. This is actually like a really unique kind of cool magnetic snap. And I wanna show you how to use this with that flap. It was a little, little finagling, so I just wanted to show you how I did it. And then I have five purse feet, but these purse feet are actually rivet purse feet. So I use my rivet press to install these. So I'm gonna show you again how to, how to, how to use some of these things. All right, so here's most of the other stuff I'll be using today. I'm probably forgetting something. We have a lot of stuff because I'm using a lot of different types of tools. Uh, first, I have my rivet press. You guys know how much I love my rivet press. I have a video going over my love of my rivet press. So uh, this is from Cam Snaps. So There's actually a whole Oak Roots bundle if you wanna check it out. To go with my rivet press, I have a couple of dies here. So this is actually a 12 millimeter rivet top die. So it has a screw on it that goes on the top. And then the bottom die, I don't know if you can tell, but it has, like, it's pretty deep. This is actually for those purse feet. So it's pretty neat. Um, I'm gonna show you how those make purse feet install super easy. And then I have a hole punch. And then I have a screwdriver set and some tape. This is gonna be specifically for the presser foot on my machine to make sure that nothing sticks because clear vinyl is super sticky. So we have to protect anything that can stick to it. Uh, the thread I'm using in the needle today is a Tex 45 weight thread. The thread I'm using in the bottom is a Guterman Mara 100 weight thread. And then for needles, I'll be using a Microtex 8012 for the most part, but when the layers start really getting thick, I like to upgrade to a 9014 or even a jeans needle. Uh, the thicker you, layers of clear vinyl, the harder it's gonna be. I have some eighth of an inch wide double-sided tape, and then I have some washi tape to just hold things together. I have my air racing marker and my vinyl silver ink marker. Those are always just good things to have on hand. I have my stiletto and seam ripper combo, a lighter to clean up loose threads, and then a one inch by six inch ruler. Okay, so let's go through these pattern pieces, starting with the main body pattern piece. So whenever you print this out, you're gonna have two pieces like this, and you're actually gonna tape them together just like that. And then the pattern says that you cut out one piece of vinyl like this. I have a directional print on my vinyl, so I switched it up just a little bit. So I actually kept them separate and they are identical, so you only need to keep one of them if you're gonna do this. 
And then I cut out two, but not just with this. So I cut it out so the sides and the top are the same, and, and we're gonna actually change the sides even. Uh, but I added a half of an inch to this bottom short edge. So this one right here, I added half of an inch to each of these, because I'm gonna sew them together and then open them up, and, and I wanted a half of an inch seam allowance. So I just used one of the main body panels, traced it along all the edges, and added a half of an inch to the bottom. Because of some of the changes I'm gonna be making today, um, we'll get to that in just a moment, I'm actually going to even trim down the sides a bit, and I'll explain that to you once we get there. I don't, I don't wanna get too confusing just yet. Okay, next up is the base panel. You're gonna have one cut of your faux leather or vinyl for that, and one cut of your quilt cotton, and the quilt cotton needs to have the woven interfacing attached to the back of it, so it's just like this. And then you're gonna have two cuts from your faux leather or vinyl for the flap, and the pattern gives you a great suggestion on how to cut this out. If you're using a turn lock, this flap is much easier to make than if you're doing what I'm doing. So if you're using a turn lock, you can actually just get two rectangles that are a little bit bigger than this, and then glue them together, sew it, cut it. It's much easier than what I'm doing. Um, however, I kind of have to install and sew at the same time, which I'm gonna walk you through but if you're using the twist lock, it's gonna be a lot easier. All right, we have a few more pieces of vinyl. You should have a nice long strip of vinyl. This is actually gonna go around the top of the bag. You're just gonna fold it over the top clear edge of the bag. I'm not gonna be using this, actually. I think I'm gonna use that nylon binding because it's just so easy. Uh, but if you don't have that, and or if, you know you just wanna pull it in really nicely, then definitely use this. This will tie it in really nice with the flap, um, and it, it just looks best. I'm just a, a baby. Uh, and then you're gonna have two cuts for your D-ring connectors. I do suggest you do this in the first bag I showed you. We used, you know, a piece of hardware, which I wouldn't recommend for this specific bag because the material is just not thick enough where we install the hardware. So I would suggest trying this one out, which we're gonna try out today. And then you're gonna have two smaller cuts of rectangles here, and these are gonna be for the other end of either your twist lock or your magnetic snap. And last but not least, you have the stabilizer for the bottom of the bag. This is also gonna have placement for the five purse feet. So you're gonna wanna make sure you print that out so that you can mark those placements. All right, so let's start with this flap. If you're doing this fancy schmancy magnetic stamp like I am, let me walk you through how we're gonna do this, okay? It takes a little bit of thought. So let's first look at how this goes. You're gonna need the fancy piece here and it has screws on it and it has a front and the back. We're gonna unscrew it. And then you're gonna want the male end of the magnetic snap. The male end is very thin and that's the one we wanna use with this. So I'm just gonna grab a screwdriver and I'm gonna remove the screws from the back of this. There are three, don't lose them. So I always like to have my little lid here and I keep the screws in there. Okay, so these are your two pieces. Your back is like a washer piece. It's nice and flat. And then you have your pretty side here just like that. And so thinking about this, these two pieces are gonna be wrong sides together, right? One side, the front of it, is going to have the pretty little you know, flower here. And then on the back, you're going to have the magnetic snap and your washer. Now here's how it goes. The washer is gonna be installed on this back piece with the magnetic snap going through it, but the prongs from the magnetic snap have to go behind this material right here but you're gonna have screws going through the three screws holes here. Oh, that's hard to say. And they're gonna go through both material to the front. So you, you kind of have a lot of layers here and not everything goes in the same place. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So looking at the piece here, that's gonna have the magnetic snap on the back. So this is the underside of the flap. Keeping the vinyl right side up, take your template and put it right on top of it. And then you'll see on the bottom part of your template here, there's a little oval, and that's to mark the opening for the twist lock. But what I did was I just punched a hole with a pen right through the center of that oval, just so I know where the center is. And then I'm gonna use my marking tool to mark that center dot. And then grab your washer. Now your washer does have a direction here. You need to be careful with that. So you want your washer to be right side up. So it's pretty side up. See, there's a not pretty side. Pretty side up and center this so that the center hole of your washer is over that dot, and then mark straight lines in the little vertical pieces next to it, and then also draw the dots on the outside, so this is where the screws go. So mark where those are. Now grab a seam ripper and very, very gently cut where those two vertical lines are, only where those vertical lines are, and then grab your hole punch and make sure you're using the punch size that is bigger than the screw holes that are sticking out of the front piece. So you see you have your front piece here and then you have these little 
things that stick out, these little cylinders, that's where the screws go. You wanna make sure those are gonna be able to go through all the material. So just make sure the hole you're punching is bigger than that. And then looking at those three outer dots, not the center one, use your hole punch, center it over them and punch them out. All right, so now if you were to take your washer and lay it over this and line it up with those holes you punched out, and then you could take the male end of your magnetic snap and slide it through the washer and the prong should come through the back. And then you also have a metal washer that's gonna go over the back as well as I would suggest a scrap material of anything. Scrap of Decoville Light, Decoville Heavy, whatever. Uh, just a scrap piece of stabilizer. But before we install that, what we wanna do is we wanna prep the front piece because we've only been working on the back piece. So now what you wanna do is take your back and front piece and lay them wrong sides together. Just like they're gonna be in the end, make sure you match up all the edges. And so now we're looking at the back piece here that has the holes punched out and you're just going to draw inside those holes so that you're marking the front piece here, just like that. And then grab your hole punch and punch out those three holes. Okay, so now let's just do a test run. We have our back piece and our front piece. So you're going to take, you can take your little back washer piece, lay it so it's pretty side up, put your magnetic snap in it, just like that insert it so the prongs go through the back here and then put the other piece over that and make sure this is gonna line up oh yeah that's gonna look so pretty look at that okay so let's install this and then we're gonna sew it together so use your little washer your little disc washer and your scrap piece of stabilizer to mark the slits on your stabilizer take your washer and your magnetic snap, slip it through the slits, make sure the holes are all lined up. So you wanna make sure your three screw holes are all lined up, flip this over, Again, this is the bottom piece of the flap, add your stabilizer, add your washer, and push down the prongs. I like to push them inwards. And now if you see, some of the stabilizer is covering the holes for the screws, and I don't want that, I want, I want there to be nothing blocking the screws from getting through. So I'm just gonna trim this down a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab a very small piece of duct tape. I mean, super small piece for this. And we're just going to cover the prongs because those will rub on the back of the other piece over time and we don't want a hole there. There we go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our front piece of material and we're gonna lay these wrong sides together, just like that. So we have the back piece here and the front piece and then you're gonna grab the pretty side, so your little flower here, insert that through the holes, and then we're gonna flip this over, and look at the back of our washer here, and then grab your screws and your screwdriver and screw these in place. I know it's quite a few steps. I mean, it's quite a bit of extra work. It's definitely a lot more work than the twist lock. Uh, but it is really cool, and I wanted to show you guys how to use something like this. It just it just takes a bit of planning, because you got a lot of different directions and mirrored objects and things like that. And I don't find sewing this on afterwards to be difficult, because we have enough space. Okay, there we go. And you don't even have to tighten them all the way. If you don't want, you can go back and tighten them after you're done sewing. So now we have that installed. Now what we want to do is grab some clips, which I forgot to show you in the beginning of the video. <laughs> And we want to clip these two pieces of material so that they are wrong sides together. Now, I have no problem sewing all this together with everything installed. You could take off this front flower piece because you have the back washer and you have the ma this male part of the snap already installed. So you need to keep that installed, but you could take off this front piece and the screws and install that later if you'd like. All right, so once you get this all lined up and as flat as possible, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along all the edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I do suggest, especially if you already have hardware installed, that you use a zipper foot for this. It's going to make it much easier. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you, I forgot to turn the camera on whenever I was first top stitching around all this. And I really just wanted you to see that I have a zipper foot on and that I had a piece of tape on it in order to do this. And so I did a second row of top stitching around it it's not the look I was going for, but it works, it's fine. I just really wanted you guys to be able to see that and I didn't wanna make a whole nother strap. So once you have this strap put together, if you have any edges that are overhanging, like sometimes it twists a little bit or you know, they're just not cut perfectly because we're not perfect. Um, you're gonna take your scissors and you just shave it down so that 
On both sides, you don't see any of the backing of the other piece peeking through. All right, and I backstitch at the beginning and the end, and what I'm gonna do now is just run my lighter just along this top edge here to melt down the ends of that thread. And I do this specifically when I'm gonna be edge coating. I'm not gonna be edge coating in the video today, but even if you're not edge coating, this is a good thing to do. You might notice you have a lot of little fuzzies kind of hanging off the sides of the raw edges. Um, you just grab your lighter and just very quickly, very, very quickly, don't let it linger because it can create little char marks. But I just very quickly run the lighter around the edges and it just burns off all those little fuzzies so it's nice and clean. And like I said, if you were gonna edge coat, now you're gonna get a really smooth edge coating. If you do that, you won't have any little weird bumps. Okay, and while we're here, let's just go ahead and do the other end. So this would either be for the twist part of your twist lock or this is gonna be for the female part of your magnetic snap. Let's just prep this because if you were gonna edge coat, you'd wanna do all this at once and then work on the edge coating like that. So grab your two little small rectangles and lay them so that they are wider than they are tall, so the longer edges are on the top and the bottom. Flip this to the back, and you just wanna find the midpoint on the back of one of them. So you can just fold, you can measure this with a, with a ruler if you'd like, or you can just fold this. We just wanna find the midpoint. Now using that midpoint and the washer from your other piece, center the hole over that midpoint and mark the vertical slits for the prongs. Repeat this for a scrap piece of stabilizer. So this is deck of the light, but it can be any type of stabilizer. Just repeat this over there so that you can find slit marks. And then grab your seam ripper and very gently rip along those marks. You always wanna make sure you're doing it shorter than what you marked. So don't, don't cut slits that are longer than those marks because then whatever you're installing is just gonna kinda of jiggle around. We want a tight fit, really tight fit. It's even better if it's a little too small. So now taking that piece you're working on, flip it to the right side, insert your either twist piece or your female part of your magnetic snap through the slits, put it on the back, insert the stabilizer piece, and then put the washer over the prongs. And then I like to fold the prongs in on themselves, even though it is a little bulky. I don't wanna, I just don't wanna run the risk of sewing over them. And then once again, we're gonna grab a tiny piece of duct tape just to protect the back. Super tiny piece. I don't want to sew over the duct tape either because that's a mess. All right, you might find this helpful to use some double-sided tape here because it is so small, but it is kind of bulky. So we're just gonna add a couple pieces of double-sided tape along the top and bottom long edges of this just to hold these two pieces together. And then take your other little rectangle and lay these wrong sides together. And this is gonna protect, it's just gonna cover the back of that, just like that. So now you see you have a nice little rectangle that has the magnetic snap installed. So if you're gonna be edge coating this, I actually suggest you add the double-sided tape along all four edges to hold it together because we don't stitch this on until later. So you could stitch this now, edge coat it and stitch it on again, um, or you can just leave it like this. And again, using tape to hold the edges together really nicely, you could then edge coat these edges at the same time while you're edge coating this so that it, these pieces can all dry before you install them. I'm not gonna be edge coating today, but I just wanted to make sure you knew to do these at the same time so you don't waste time later. All right, you can set these two pieces to the side. All right, let's work on the base. So grab your vinyl cut for the base, and then on the long top and bottom edges, mark three quarters of an inch away from each long edge. Grab some double-sided tape here, and let's add the double-sided tape just right above the line that you marked. Now I am using eighth of an inch wide double-sided tape because that's what I have. <laughs> I would suggest you use quarter of an inch wide double-sided tape here. It's gonna be sturdier, especially if you have um, a firmer type of vinyl. You're gonna want all the help you can get. I just, I'm out of quarter inch double-sided tape at the moment. Okay, so once you have the tape on there, remove the paper and then fold the long edge of the vinyl, wrong sides back to meet that line. So you're just, you're folding down a 3 8 inch seam, right? But I will tell you, double tape doesn't last forever with vinyl, so I also like to use clips here so that I'm not pulling my hair out when this starts popping up. So repeat this for the other edge as well, just folding the long edge back wrong sides together. All right, you can set this to the side for just a moment. Then you're gonna to wanna to grab the quill cotton part of the base and you're gonna flip it upside down and along the long edges, you're gonna measure seven eighths of an inch away from each long edge and draw a line. And then fold the long raw edges back, wrong sides together, so the long edges meet up with that drawn line. Grab an iron, 
and press this back. If you'd rather use tape here, you can do that. If you're using like a water resistant canvas instead of quilt cotton, you can still iron it or you can use tape, whichever you prefer. Once I press it and it's warm, I like to just kind of push on it with my fingers to help it cool and stay nice and crisp. So I'm gonna do this with the other side as well. All right, once you have that prepped, you can set that to the side as well. Now grab your stabilizer piece, whatever you're using, and grab the template for that. Lay it over the stabilizer so that all matches up perfectly. I just punched little holes using a stiletto through all of the purse feet marks. So that way I could stick my marker through them and mark where the purse feet go. Now I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I'm gonna put it on the smallest hole punch size this time. And I'm gonna punch out the hole for all of these. Now this is because I'm using a rivet type of purse feet. I'm not using the prongs. If you're using prongs and you're gonna to want to install it similar to how we did the magnetic snaps where you center the washer, mark the slits for the prongs and install like that. But if you're doing the rivet one, this is very quick. Okay, now grab your vinyl piece here and grab your stabilizer. And if you wanna adhere it with heat, you can. You don't need to though. Um, I'm actually gonna grab some tape and I'm gonna add some tape along the back edge of my Decobo Heavy, which is what I'm using, along the long edges. You could do all four edges if you'd like, but I'm just gonna do the long edges for now. And again, you could just get you know a scrap piece of quilt cotton and cover this material and press this in place if you'd like. Um, whatever, whatever is easiest for you. Okay, and then remove the paper from the tape. And then you're gonna flip this over and center it on the back of your vinyl. And it should overlap the raw edge of your vinyl fold over. There we go. So that should also help hold down that vinyl. There we go. All right, once you have that in place, you can grab your hole punch again. Um, and you can just put the hole punch where you already punched the holes in the deco bell heavy or your Peltex and punch it so you're going through the vinyl as well. If you only marked them previously, then you can punch them for the first time now. All right, once the holes have been punched, grab your rivet press and your die set so the big piece goes on the bottom and then the rivet part goes on the top. And then I'm gonna grab my little rivet Percy, which I love so much. And the rivet part has the long piece on it. That goes through the back side to the front. And then the front, you're gonna snap on that foot just like that. So go ahead and just snap all these into place. Remember the rivets on the back, the foot is on the right side of the vinyl. All right, and then inserting this in, the foot part goes down into that little hole just like that and then press down. And you see, super firm. You don't have to worry about any prongs and it's, ridiculously quick. <laughs> I mean, I just, I always talk about rivet presses because a lot of people think that you have to be like a bag professional in order to have a rivet press in order to justify having one. And honestly, my opinion is you just have to be someone who's not perfect and a little lazy because adding rivets, it just makes everything better and it looks super organized, but it's so quick and easy. Um, yeah, I just love it, so there you go. All right, now if you wanna do a little stitching here, you can, that's what the pattern suggests, a fun little quilting design. I'm not doing any of the quilting on the clear vinyl or this base piece, so I'm, I'm skipping that part. And then I'm gonna look at the back of this, and I think I can probably remove my clips for the most part right now. And I'm gonna once again grab my double-sided tape, and I'm gonna add double-sided tape along these long edges just above that stabilizer. And it gets a little wild over here because it's not flat anymore. So I'm gonna do that on both sides of the stabilizer and then remove the paper from both of these and then grab your quilt cotton piece and you're gonna lay it wrong sides down along the wrong side of your vinyl piece and just match up those edges just like that. All right, so now your base is done and ready to be installed. First though, we need to prepare the clear panels. All right, so I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek um, later in the pattern, you're actually gonna do what's called a French seam along the sides of this bag. That's actually where when we sew the sides together, these short sides, we sew it together once, wrong sides together, and then we flip it out so that it's wrong sides out, right sides together, and then we sew it again. So the seams are folded in on themselves. If you've done the grocery tote tutorial, then you know what that is. It is beautiful, it really is, but my machine and the, this clear vinyl do not get along when we do that. I mean, it was a lot of bad words were said um, in my sewing room. So I, I'm not gonna do that today. 
because I, I want to try something different. I just want to try something different. So I'm not going to do the French seams because I am going to be using that nylon binding that's going to look so good everywhere. So since I'm not doing those, before I sew these together, I want to prep them just a little bit more. I'm going to grab a ruler and I'm going to shave off a quarter of an inch along both of these sides on the top here. So we're not dealing with anything down here. Nothing down here gets messed with. Just these two sides on both panels, I'm going to cut off a quarter of an inch on each side. That's all I'm doing. So that way later when I sew it, I can sew it at a 3 8 inch seam allowance and hopefully the boxing will all work out. All right, so I've just shaved them off. You probably don't even notice. <laughs> um, and you might wonder like why? Why cut off that quarter inch? Well, because we sew them at a quarter of an inch and then we sew them again at a 3 8 inch. And my worry is, is that if we didn't cut off that quarter inch, that the boxing won't be correct. Box, when you box a bottom, there's very specific math that goes with that. And I didn't test it, so I can't say for sure, but I am worried that it wouldn't box correctly and I would hate to have to go through all this just to do it again. So we're not gonna do that. So first, let's build our main panel. So I have my two cuts here again because I was being different. <laughs> and um, instead of one big piece, I have two cuts. I added a half of an inch to the bottom here. So now we're gonna make it into one cut. So lay these right sides together, lining up those bottom edges specifically and clip along this bottom edge here. And this again is only if you're using two pieces like I am because of a directional print. And now I'm gonna sew along this bottom edge here at a half inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and the end. All right, and I wanna talk about the clear vinyl for just a moment. All clear vinyl is different. Uh, this specific clear vinyl I'm using, it is called a TPU clear vinyl. It's very nice, easy to work with, not very stiff. Um, the front of it, where it's very shiny, is very sticky. So when this is touching something, we're gonna be protecting it in some way or another, either with the backing from the clear vinyl or some tissue paper, tape, whatever. Uh, because this stuff is gonna wanna stick to everything. It loves everything. The back of it though, is where the printing is done. So the ink that is creating the design is printed on the back of this, which creates a matte feel. So you can actually sew pretty easily with this touching anything and avoid sticking. But now what we wanna do is we wanna open this up and I want to open the seam allowance all the way. So pressing the seam allowance open, there we go. And then on the front here, we're gonna look at it from there. And now to keep that seam allowance pressed open, I'm gonna top stitch along both edges of this seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. It does get sticky, so tape on your presser foot. And if you need to, grab some of this stuff. And honestly, you can just rip it off. It's super easy to rip. Grab some of that. And you can just put this underneath like that. And you can sew right over it. And you can you just rip it out of the stitches. It's super easy, I love this stuff. Okay, and one thing I wanna mention is that this seam right here is gonna be covered by the base panel later. You're not gonna see any of this stitching. So if you're like, this doesn't look good, don't worry, you're never gonna see it. Um, so let's flip this over and you can see I just sewed, I just kept this right underneath there and you just rip it right out of the seams. Um, even if it folds over on itself, it's fine. I love that stuff. If you wanna pull it out of the center, you can. It doesn't have to look perfect. Again, I'm even gonna cover this some more, so it's okay. So whereas, like I said, this right here won't be seen in the end, this right here will. So if you're fine with this, then just leave it. But if you wanna get a little fancy, we can grab our binding. Now see, it has a paper on the back. And guys, I love this stuff so much. I love this stuff so much. I'm not gonna tell you how to spend your money, but I highly suggest you get some of this stuff. It is so good. And I'm just gonna cut it the same length as that there. And it's, so, it's, it's just like a nylon. It's so nice, it's so pretty. There's so many different colors. It's got this paper on the back. I don't find the stickiness on this to be have any problem with my machine whatsoever. It's totally fine. And then just remove the paper from the back of it and then lay this down and you can just cover that seam just like that. Look how cute that is. And now I'm just gonna go top stitch along the long edges of this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, you'll see it here, so I keep this side up, but you're not gonna see it on this side later because this will be covered up. All right, so you see that looks nice there? On the back here, again, just rip this out. Easy peasy. And I'm telling you, you spend, you, you try one time, one time you try sewing with this stuff and not using this, you're not gonna be happy. Okay, so now your clear vinyl should be prepped and it should be just like it is if you were to have cut it in one piece. All right, so now you're gonna grab your base piece. So let's just center this over the back and then I'm just gonna use clips to hold it in place along the sides. 
All right, and then we're gonna go to the sewing machine. We're gonna top stitch along all four edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. A zipper foot's gonna be helpful here, especially with these little prongs if you're using them, or just any type of purse feet. Zipper foot's gonna be helpful. How stinking cute is this? This is gonna look so good. Okay, so far so good. So far we shouldn't have encountered anything too challenging. Okay, so now let's go ahead and mark the midpoints along the top edges of our bag. So I'm just gonna fold this clear vinyl in half, just like that. And then I'm going to use my scissors to cut a teeny tiny triangle. I'm gonna do this on both sides. Now decide which, which one you want to be the front of the bag. The back, I think this will be the front here. There we go. Grab your little piece here that either has the pokey part of the twist lock or it has the female end of the magnetic snap. And I am gonna use double side tape here, even though you're gonna see it in the end, I need tape. So I'm gonna add some double sided tape to the back of this. All right, so I measured one and three eighths of an inch down from the center of this top piece here. And then I used the double sided tape to just stick on this little rectangle here. And now I'm gonna go top stitch along all four edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold it in place. Use that zipper foot for this one, definitely. All right, so once you have that stitched on, I like to grab my other piece here and just lay it on top just to see how it's going to look and that is adorable, but I wanna add a bag tag and I wanna make sure it's not covered up. So I'm going to just center my bag tag just like this right underneath the strap. And I like to just grab a piece of double-sided tape to put on the back of it to help hold it in place. All right, so I'm gonna lift this up. And now I'm gonna go top stitch along all four edges of my bag tag at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so the front is prepped. Let's flip this around and look at the right side of the back and we're going to attach our flap. So your flap is gonna be right side up, so pretty side up. So you wanna measure three inches down from the top edge of the back panel and center your strap and tape it down. Again, strap is right side up just like that. And then measure from the bottom edge of the strap up three quarters of an inch. And what you're gonna do now is you're just gonna top stitch over the top stitching you've already done and then over that three quarter of an inch straight line as well. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, let's just take a look and see how this will look. Let's take the tape off and then let's fold the panels wrong sides together. Attach the magnetic snap. That's looking really cute, isn't it? Isn't that so cute? So if you would add a couple of rivets in this little space right here, you're more than welcome to do that. I don't think this gets a whole lot of um, attention. This doesn't get a whole lot of force on it, but you can definitely reinforce it with a couple of rivets, which I think would look really nice. Okay, now we're going to attach the sides, but we're gonna do it different than the pattern. The pattern is gonna have you sew it like this. You're gonna flip the panels wrong sides together, just like this, sew along the sides at a quarter inch seam allowance, and then flip it out so that they're right sides together, wrong sides out. And then sew again at a 3 8 inch seam allowance to tuck in those raw edges. And that prevents the bag from having any sort of like a um, pokey or anything like that on it. But like I said, my machine was not having it. So, so we're going to try something else. So we're going to take this and we're going to flip it right sides together. And we're going to line up those sides. Again, right sides together. Move that base out of the way. I know it's a very firm base, but you can still fold it and get it out of here. So do this for both sides. All right, now we're gonna sew along both of these clipped edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so ideally later when we sew this, like when we box these corners, it's going to be easiest if the side seams are open. So if you can press these side seams open and then stitch it like that, that's gonna reduce the bulk the most. However, then you're going to have some kind of pokey bits inside. So you can see if I open up the top and the bottom, the side bit here is still closed and it gets kind of weird looking. Um, you could try opening the seam completely and top stitching along both edges, kind of like we did on the bottom. That would be very difficult to do with this size bag though. Another option is to grab some binding and bind over this, but that's gonna be a little tricky because then we have to fold this. So, so I just want you to think about a couple things here, okay? This is what I'm gonna try. This is what I'm gonna try. First, I'm gonna look at my edges and I'm gonna cut off a little 45 degree angle right along the top and the bottom. That's gonna help reduce some bulk, okay? So right on the top and bottom. I'm not cutting into the stitching at all. I'm just cutting the clear vinyl. There we go. Okay, so I cut a couple pieces of binding that are the a little bit longer than the edges are over here. And what I'm gonna do is while they still have the paper on them, I'm actually gonna fold them in half, like a hot dog, wrong sides together. And again, they have paper on them still, so I'm not sticking them to each other. That just gives me a little pre-fold. And then I'm gonna remove the paper from the back of this. And then I'm going to just wrap this around that edge. So one way to do this might be to keep it sticky side up. Take your P50 
piece of material here, line up the raw edge so it's by that midpoint fold. Doesn't have to be perfect, don't worry about it. There we go. So I have it stuck like that and then I'm just gonna wrap it around. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it stuck on there. There we go. And it, it will be a little weird on the edges where I clip the corners, that's okay. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Now I'm gonna top stitch along the edge of this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance from the raw edge. Um, just do this on both sides. All right, once that's stitched on, you can trim down the excess. So you're binding excess on the top or bottom, just trim it down. Now we're gonna box the bottoms. So take your bottom here, and it's already kind of naturally boxing, and just fold it so the material is right sides together. The side seam should match up with the midpoint along the bottom edge here. And then just fold, fold the seam either to the front or the back. I believe the pattern suggests folding the seam towards the back, so we can go ahead and do that. This down here gets very bulky, very, very bulky, no matter how you're doing it, if you're doing the French seams or not, it's bulky, so be careful. This might be where you wanna up your needle. So do the same thing on the other side, just make sure you're flipping the seam in the same direction. So seam towards the back, matching it up with the midpoint. All right, now we're gonna sew along these clipped edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, this is looking good. Now the pattern says to do two rows of stitching, which I'm going to do, but I'm gonna do binding as well. Binding is optional, you don't have to. You can just do a second row of stitching uh, to reinforce it. But since we've already been using so much of this binding, let's just keep using it. So I'm just going to cut this so that it's longer than the boxed edge. And then just like I did previously, I'm gonna fold this in half, wrong sides together, like a hot dog bun, and then remove the paper, and place that raw edge so that the raw edge meets up with the middle where the fold is. There we go. And then I'm just gonna wrap this around so it covers the stitching that I've already done. There we go. Just like that. So I'm gonna repeat that on the other box corner here. Okay, now I'm going to top stitch along these edges and I'm gonna top stitch just under a quarter of an inch from the edge. So the goal is to not go right over the stitching we've already done, but just go outside of it closer to the edge. And I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end. All right, once you have it stitched on, just trim down any overhang of your binding. So now the bag is pretty much done. You can flip it right side out. How stinking cute is this little guy? So all we have to do now is put some binding around the top edge and then do our D-ring straps. But look at how cute this little stinker is. And it's so fancy with its little purse feet. Okay, so for the binding on the top, you can use your vinyl, like the pattern does, and make it all come together. Or you can use your binding if you're already using your binding. Uh, if you feel really comfortable working with the sticky stuff, then I suggest go ahead and do that. Uh, that's what I'm gonna use. Also because I just really like it. <laughs> uh, but mostly because it's just really easy to work with. Just make sure that your binding cut is the same length as the vinyl cut suggestion in the pattern. And once again, before we add it, I'm gonna fold it in half, just like I've been doing. So with the paper on the back, we just fold the binding wrong sides together, long sides together. And I always like to start on the back edge because I, I don't know, I feel like that's less noticeable. So I'm gonna remove, I'm not gonna remove all the paper from the binding, just the section I'm working on, since this is so long. Just remove some of it. And then you just go around and tape it around the top edge. So I'm always just kind of lining up the top edge with that fold and then I do a couple inches and then press it by wrapping it around like that. And make sure when you get to the sides that whatever side you folded the seam to, you fold it to on the top as well. So on the base here, I folded the seam back to the back. I'll make sure I fold the seam to the back on the side at the top as well. All right, once you have the binding attached, whatever one you're using, I'm gonna use about a 3 8 inch seam allowance around from the top folded edge here all the way around, just top stitching this in place. All righty, the top binding is now done. So the back part is mostly done. We just have to do the D-rings and attach them. Okay, now grab your two D-ring straps and on the back mark a midpoint going along the long edges. And then I'm gonna grab my double-sided tape and I'm gonna add double-sided tape to both of the long edges. If I can find the end of it. Both of the long edges of my vinyl on the wrong side of the vinyl. So do this for both long edges on both pieces of your vinyl cuts. And then you can remove the paper from that tape. 
and fold the long edge back wrong sides together so that it meets that midpoint mark. And just tape it down. And if you need to, grab some clips to hold it in place. All right, once you have them taped back, let's take these to the sewing machine and just top stitch along all four edges of each of these at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You know what, we should have made these in the beginning of the video. Because um, if you wanted to edge coat the raw edges of this, you could have edge coated that at the same time you edge coated everything else. So um, I'll make a note at the beginning of the video to do that if you want to edge coat these. Okay, so now I'm using Chicago screws, which means I'm gonna do this a little bit different than if it was rivets. Because once again, the Chicago screws have like, just like our magnetic snap over here, it has this long bit that needs to go through all the material. So the hole that I punch needs to be able to accommodate that, which is probably going to be the largest of my hole punches again. Yeah, even that's gonna be a tight fit, so. I'm gonna use the largest one here. And then we're gonna measure in one quarter of an inch from the edge and center it and mark a dot there and punch out the hole. And then we're gonna go three quarters of an inch in from that raw edge and punch another hole, just like that. And then repeat that on the other short edge, a quarter inch and three quarters of an inch away from the raw edge over here. I'm just testing it out with a little bat. Look how cute that is, that's gonna work. It's gonna be cute. Now grab one of your D-rings and you're gonna thread this through the straight part of the D-ring so that the back of your D-ring connectors come together just like that. And then we're gonna wrap this around the edge of our bag. And so what you wanna do is just kind of keep this folded in half and then wrap it around the edge and figure out where you, how high you want this, where you want this to go and center it and then use your marking tool and mark where you need to punch the holes in the side of the bag. So I actually don't center it right on the seam because I don't want to punch a hole in the actual seam. I'm pushing it just slightly back towards the back panel. And once that's good, I'll grab my hole punch and I'll punch out those holes. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab the little bat decorative piece of my Chicago screw and I'm gonna insert that through one edge of the D-ring strap connector, and then I'm gonna wrap this around and insert that prong through the clear vinyl and also through the seam on the side. And then I'm going to wrap the other edge around and continue pushing the Chicago screw through that hole. And then I'll grab the screw part and just screw it onto the back. And this is perfect because this is pretty, these seams are pretty thick and we want a thicker seam with these Chicago screws. Okay, so I've got one installed. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. All right, so I just kinda like to loosely screw them on first just to make sure it all looks okay. These little bats are so cute. Look at that, isn't that so cute? And it goes perfect with the vinyl. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it so much. All right, so once you like where they are, you can just tighten those screws. If you wanna put like a little droplet of glue in the, um, the opening part, the screw hole, and then screw them in to make sure that nothing happens, you can definitely do that. But look how stinking, that looks so good, doesn't it? All right, so all you're gonna do is just repeat that exactly for the other side, which I'm gonna do off camera. All right, look at this stinking cute bag with the bats and the flowers and then also the fish, because why not? So I'm gonna attach my little fish strap to this. How cute is this bag? And honestly, for me personally, it was a lot easier for me to sew the tops and the bottoms of these side seams without doing the French seam, even though the French seam does look so, so good. So I encourage you to try the French seam if you can. Uh, but if you're struggling like I was struggling, you have other options. This pattern is so, so good. The measurements are so perfect. Oh my gosh, this is just the most perfect clear little bag. You guys, I am using this Taylor Swift inspired vinyl for these bags. I sadly am not a Swifty. I don't, um, I don't know the music that well, but I love this vinyl. It is so cute. These little bats. Look at those little bats. It's so cute. And um, the adaptation we did this time with the binding on the side, it works. I mean, does it look better with a French seam? Yes, it does. Doing a French seam with your clear vinyl is going to look better. Was it easier for me and my diva of a machine to sew with the binding? Yes, it was. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's like when you're a parent and you have kind of like a, a kid who's just not in the mood and it's like, 
what battle do I want to fight with you today? You know, like, what do I want to let you get away with? So I, I let my machine get away with the French seams on this one, but we're, we're going to come back around. We're going to figure out how to do it the right way because it's beautiful. But this still turned out so lovely. I love this magnetic snap. It is so cute. I love, love, love the sides. Okay, let's talk about these deer rings for a moment. So on the first bag, I used a piece of hardware that you screw into the top sides. I do not recommend you do that because this hardware is really meant for thicker material and this material up here on the seam is just too thin. It's not enough. And so this does feel a little like loosey-goosey and I worry over time that those screws are gonna come out. I'm gonna make sure I glue them, but that's not the hardware we wanna use. You wanna do it the way the pattern suggests, trust me. You wanna make your little D-ring connectors and you wanna use the most adorable rivets you can find. These are not rivets, these are Chicago screws. They are little bat Chicago screws. Can you even stand how stinking cute they are? I couldn't believe I had bat Chicago screws, so it was perfect for this bag. I love it so much, it's so, so pretty. So I hope you love making this bag as much as I do. If you do any adaptations, let me know. If you have any advice for clear vinyl, I mean, leave them down below. People are always looking for tips for clear vinyl. I cannot tell you how many times I chat with someone and they tell me, I want to work with clear vinyl so bad, but every single time I try, my machine gets so mad at me and I just cry. <laughs> and I know that feeling, trust me, I know that. Clear vinyl is one of those materials we all wanna sew with but just depending on what's going on with your machine, it, it just might not happen and it makes you so, so sad. So any tips you have, leave them down below. I tried to share as many as I could throughout the tutorial, what I use to make it work. And um, for the most part, it works pretty well. So any other advice though, leave it down, down below. Cause I, I could use them too. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. If you're watching this live, happy Christmas. I hope you had a great 2023 almost 2024. I think 2024 is going to be a good year. I think it's going to be, I think it's progressively been a good, a better year every year for the most part. <laughs> All right, guys, get out there and make something. Bye. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope that you are inspired to go make something, have a lot of fun with these patterns. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure you click subscribe down below. Also make sure you hit that little bell, the little notification bell. That's gonna make sure you're notified every single time we have a new video or when we go live. For even more fun content from Oakwoods, make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram. We do daily stories over there, which include unboxing, talks about books, other little mini tutorials, lots and lots of discussion over all kinds of things going on. You can also find us on TikTok and also on Reels for even more fun, kind of more random content. And if you really wanna dive in for some behind the scenes content, free gifts, access to shop items before anybody else and influence on upcoming videos, make sure you go check out Oak Alerts over on Patreon. We have a lot going on over there and it's a fun place to hang out and you are directly supporting the Oak Alerts YouTube channel. These videos could not be possible without the help of my Patreon. So thank you so, so much to everybody over there. Thank you again for watching today's tutorial. I hope you enjoy the videos. Go make something.